Alright, I'm going to cover electronic throttle control, specifically throttle motor testing with an oscilloscope. So here we have a, a simple GM uh, typical system here. We have our APP that is an input to the ECM and then in the TAC module we have a throttle position sensor that is a feedback. We'll cover those in another video. We're going to worry about the motor controls down here. So the first thing you need to do is you need to understand how your scope works. So a lot of scopes have a common ground. If you have a Pico 4225 or a 4425, you're going to have floating inputs and you can do something a little bit different. But if you have a common ground, you need to make sure you ground your test lead out to the negative of the battery. Then you're going to take one test lead and put it on TAC 1 for channel A and then another test lead on TAC 2 channel B. This motor gets, you know, power and ground and they actually reverse the polarity to open or close the motor. So it's important that we have both of our test leads on there. If we were to put the red and test, black test lead across the motor, we could actually do harm to the scope because of the ground issue. Because what happens is we might put power on TAC 1 and then pulse ground on TAC 2. And then we might put power on TAC 2 and pulse ground on TAC 1. And so you'll actually, by putting your scope lead across the motor, you're going to see positive and negative voltage, which could damage the scope. So let's go ahead and look at a waveform from this car using two test leads. So here's a uh, Pico file from a vehicle. I used my A channel on this one, so let me get rid of the stuff. We're going to cover some of this stuff in another video because I got the APP and TPs on here. And so what you'll get on channel A is something that looks like this. And I have a lot of time on the screen. And this is me opening and closing the throttle. So you're going to get a pattern where you're going to have pulses and then power. Pulses, power. So basically what's happening here on channel B, we have power applied. And then we're toggling to ground. Let me zoom in. And we're not going to see tons because of the uh, sampling rate. I had it turned up pretty quick, but this is a pretty fast signal. So you see some rounded edges, but you'll see these pulses here. So this is power and then pulsing ground. So that is the way you will need to test this motor if you have a common ground. Now if you have a common ground scope but you it's a Pico, you will be able to do one more thing. So we'll come back to this waveform. With You'll be able to do some math channel stuff. So we'll come back to this waveform. Let's cover how to do this if you have a 4225 or 4425. So here's our same diagram but the uh, floating input on our newer scopes that allows us to put one channel right across the motor so it saves us a channel and uh, also you'll see we can actually get the whole picture we can kind of see when the motors being pulse power and ground so it's a little bit nicer so let's go take a look at that waveform Okay, so here is the waveform. Let me turn some stuff off here because we had some TP and current data. And then let me just scale this thing up for us to take a look at. So here you will see, since we went across the motor, we can see when the motor is being basically pulsed power to open. And then kind of like we see negative voltage, but that's because the power is being applied on the lead, you know, on the wire that we have our black lead hooked up to. So we can kind of see the openings and closings a little bit different. And if you zoom in, you'll be able to see we get the same pulses that we saw before. So a little bit easier, and we only take one channel. But if you have the uh, common ground in your scope, we can get this same waveform. So let's take a look on how to do that. Okay, so we're back at our uh, first scope with the common ground. So we have channel A and B. And so what we can do is we go to the tools, math channels, and then we can select A minus B. We can uh, also edit this if we want to change the color. Like I said in my mass airflow video, I actually like to use a color that you know, isn't one of the channels I usually recorded with, so I know that that was a math channel. So we selected A minus B. I already had it on this waveform, so let me pause.
pull it back up and display it and then change the scale and you'll see what we get is a very similar waveform to what we had on our floating input scope where we could see positive and negative voltage so you'll see we have you know negative voltage and positive voltage and so what it's we're seeing here is the difference between these two and we can even if we want to just look at the math channel only we can turn off our other channels and scale this up even more so there you have it uh, you could basically do the same thing on your older scope that a newer scope will do just a little bit you know one extra channel and a little work with the math channels so have fun and keep your scope safe and do things the right way so hopefully you learn something have a good day